Despite your taste in games and what generation you were introduced to, it seems everyone loves Pokemon. You can break the ice with anyone by asking what generation is their favourite, and what their favourite Pokemon is. However, what happens when you get bored of this franchise? Are there more Monster Tamer style games that can fill that void? Yes. Yes there is. So here's the top 10 best Monster Tamer games that isn't Pokemon. I can't speak for the more recent generations, but people in and around mine will know of this. Does anyone remember Tamagotchi? Yeah, those little keychain pets you had to feed on a real-time basis. When you put it like that, it sounds dumb. But it wasn't. It was totally fun. I swear that's not nostalgia speaking. These things were little pets you had to feed, clean after and care for. It was interesting because, depending on a number of variables, your little generic blob could become something different to your friend's pets. There was a lot of schoolyard fun to be had with stories you could trade about these things, such as feeding it meat only makes it into a dinosaur looking thing. But as quickly as it came, it soon faded into obscurity. For the impact it had, it's definitely noteworthy for its influence in future monster taming genre games. Fossil Fighters Champions is actually a sequel to a DS title in 2009 simply called Fossil Fighter. This charming game has you pick either a boy or girl, and you are in the shoes of this young, aspiring fossil fighter. You see, in this universe, rather than digging up fossils and putting them together wrong and making up things about them, you resurrect fossils for battle. To do this, you must find a fossil, then carefully clean it with your tools. It's rather different from the Pokemon formula, but it works and creates a fun, addictive element to the game. Once you watch your dino come to life before your eyes, you can then name it and raise it. Also, in contrast to Pokemon, the fighting is 3v3 on a 4 square grid, so you have an extra element of tactics on top of the basic fighting system, almost similar to some of the original Final Fantasy games. Overall, the game is charming, it's fresh enough to feel original and not just a Pokemon ripoff, yet has the experience aspects that you may feel when playing Pokemon. If you're after something new, definitely pick this game up. Monster Rancher is one of those monster tamer animes that came out a similar time to Digimon and Pokemon, and honestly, this one was a lot of fun. As usual with these shows, it wasn't long for a number of games to come out for the series, and the one I'm choosing for this list is Monster Rancher 2 for the PlayStation 2. This game has hundreds of monsters you can get. However, this isn't like Pokemon where you collect away your captors like a sadistic animal hoarder. You have one at a time, and with this one monster, you do everything. You go to town with it, you train it, you feed it. You have to care for it whilst learning the personality of your new friend. Your new friend will laugh, cry, react accordingly to how you treat it. This is interesting as it's a completely different dynamic compared to Pokemon and other Monster Tamer games. There are also some unique gameplay elements, such as getting a randomly generated monster via music CDs. That's right, if you put a music CD in your PlayStation 2 while playing the game, it'll read it and you can get some strange results doing this. Whether it was intentional or bad timing, Digimon was another big competitor to Pokemon back in the day. However, one thing set the two franchises apart, their games. While Pokemon had a decent show, the game was more than a match that encapsulate the feeling you wanted from your own Pokemon adventure. However, Digimon could never get the formula right. They were games of Digimon, not a Digimon game, if that makes sense. Well, a little game came out for the DS which changed this. Digimon World Dawn and Digimon World Dusk. Now up front, this is a game for the fans. It's not especially welcoming to newcomers to the series. However, that's not a bad thing as it's a hole that's needed filling for a long time. If you want a good introduction, start with the original Digimon World game, which has you playing as someone new to the Digimon Tamer life. The game has you playing as part of a Tamer team. The team you're in is based on which game you play. 
and you can have up to 3 Digimon on your team. It's your usual RPG fanfare. You have to progress through the story through fights, and you level up by grinding. However, to Digivolve, it's a bit more than just hitting a level cap. Each Digimon has a little criteria you have to fill. Later, you have the option to then devolve, taking you back to level 1, but with higher stats. So your level 1 Digimon will be stronger than the same level 1 Digimon that hasn't gone through this process. This adds another level of strategy, as you can choose whether to rotate your team doing this, or try stay digivolved with lower stats. The downside to this is it means you'll have to grind. A lot. But you're playing a JRPG, and it's almost a requirement in the genre. Overall, this is a game a lot of fans have been waiting for, and definitely deserves a spot on this list. Yokai Watch is one of the newer games on this list. The idea behind it is something I love. It's a monster tamer game that revolves around Japanese yokai, which are their spirits, ghosts and urban legends. And if you keep up with anything I do, you know I love these. The game is tongue in cheek and very corny in a kid's way, but this is a game aimed at a younger demographic, so I guess it gets a pass for that. In fact, that might explain the complaints that this game gets. It's fetch quest heavy, which makes the game very simplistic. Its combat is slated as lackluster as well. However, the game is rich in atmosphere that I just want to soak up. The idea of the combat is a unique attempt, I'll give it that. I feel if this game gets enough love for a sequel and they listen to the complaints, this game has a chance of becoming a new, well-beloved franchise. Something we haven't seen in a long time. For now, you could say this game has a lot of... Spirit. Ark Survival Evolved is the least cartoony game on this list. It's one of the many survival crafting games on Steam. However, they added a spin onto the genre that makes it stand out from the rest. You can tame and ride dinosaurs. How cool is that? It's... Oh my gosh, it's a kid's dream. The game already features many creatures now, and it's always being added to, which is reassuring for an early access title. A noteworthy point is how they've managed to garner an interesting audience with role players, due to the online player element, and has garnered some fun servers in which you can live among fellow natives in a growing village to fend from the wildlife, or you can cause strife and get kicked for not playing nice. You know, role play. This game came literally out of nowhere. There was no big marketing campaign, there was no secret announcement. It's an indie game that's in early access on Steam. However, this game has quickly garnered an audience that loves this game. Slime Rancher is everything that should be right about early access. The current state of the game has you going around a beautifully simple world, collecting living slime for your, well, ranch. You use their byproducts, as well as items you find on your travels to fund the expansion of your farm and gear. You can even breed these things. However, be careful with too much crossbreeding. Nasty things can come from that. Even though this game is rather new and bare in its current state, it's still a super fun game to play, and when it's complete, will hopefully be a shining title. Maybe even being the Minecraft killer, which is something that still hasn't happened in its long-lasting career. No, I'm not going to do it. You think I'm going to do it, but I'm not. I won't give an opinion on Sonic Adventure 2. I refuse. I value my like to dislike ratio. No, we don't need to talk about it either, thank goodness, because we're talking about the Chow Garden. And first of all, it took me so long to figure out that Chow is the word chaos, like the villain, without the S. This minigame gave the game a lot of replayability. You would hatch and raise various chows, and play with them in a garden. There are also minigames that train your chow for competition. I swear, Sega have been trying to reinvent the proverbial wheel with Sonic, and failing, yet have been sitting on this gold mine for so long. Like Rayman's Raving Rabbits, if the chow had split into its own franchise, 
it would have had some good potential. You know, if done well. The absurdly named Dragon Quest Monster Joker 2 is a monster tamer game based on the Dragon Quest franchise. You play as a spiky haired, Dragon Ball Z looking anime boy who's been marooned on an island filled with monsters. So what's the reasonable thing to do? Why, make the monsters join you and fight on your behalf of course. Survival 101, jeez. Well, your sick crusade doesn't stop there. Once you level up some of your captives to level 10, you can then combine them to make new, more powerful abominations. I'm kidding with my facetious tone. This game is an interesting take on the monster tamer genre by literally making you tame monsters for your survival. This game is more callous with your relationships with these beasts, as rather than trying to bond with a select few, you're rewarded for capturing and mashing together these creatures until you have an unstoppable abomination. And I kind of like this. Sure, it's great to bond with a digital pet and have an adventure to remember, but sometimes you just want to manage creatures for power, and this game fills that void perfectly. A good point to this game is rather than having to micromanage easy to win grinding fights, you can set them to auto with custom tactics. This is a welcome addition to a game in this genre with a lot of grinding. Dragon Quest series also gives faith by being an established rich RPG world, and has a wide selection of recognisable monsters to those familiar with the series. The Shin Megami Tensei games are confusing to me. They are. There is the Persona series, which I thought was the main one, turns out it isn't. Then I found the Megami Tensei series has been going since 1987. Then I found out that different games in the series that differ are technically on an alternate universe and are canon, but not canon? So if you're after a condensed description of this series, I'm sorry, we'll be here all day. However, fear not, as I've not come here empty handed. The Shin Megami series is hailed as one of the best monster game tamer series around. And for this point, I'll focus on the most recent one, Shin Megami Tensei 4. This is a more unforgiving game in the genre, where every decision in battle means something, so you can't just load all your monsters with powerful attacks and clean through the game like you can in Pokemon. And don't think you can just grind to a high level to stomp your way through the game either. The game has emphasis on attack types, giving you an extra turn if you choose an attack strong against an enemy and losing a turn if you choose one it's resistant to. For a strong team, you have to balance team composition, rather than power levelling. This game doesn't hold your hand either when navigating. You are given prompts on where to go, and it leaves it up to you to figure out the rest, and the hostile surroundings soon teach you how careful you have to be. The monster tamer aspect is also interesting. You can have up to three demons in your party, and you recruit them through vague negotiation, often with a random question. You have to answer based on how the monster looks or acts towards you. There are also demons that ask for money or items, however this can lead to an interesting dilemma of whether the demon you're recruiting is worth the item you're giving away. And it isn't even a guaranteed thing, there are some demons that will run away as soon as you give them the item, adding more complexity to the negotiating part of the game. The game gets even more complex with the fusion system. The layers of depth in this game and its series is astounding, and if you want a monster tame game with a challenge, rather than one aimed towards kids like most others are, this is a series to get into. I just wish I knew the perfect place to recommend to start. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this week's list and if you did, leave a like. And if you have more monster tame games to recommend, leave them in the comment section for people to see. If you want to see more lists in the future, subscribe. And if you want more now, click here for my top 10 scariest monsters in Metroid, or here for my top 10 strangest video game spin-offs. <laughs>